Good afternoon and aloha. One of the uh, current issues in our society is uh, domestic violence and uh, the impact of such uh, violence, the emotional and psychological impact on the victims and uh, the survivors of such uh, uh, domestic violence is a very important community subject now. And my guest this afternoon is Anel Amaral. And uh, may I call you Anel? Yes, Just, uh, please. Please do. Uh, for the sake of our um, program this afternoon. And then uh, could you give us a brief background on your past occupation, your current occupation, and your experience uh, or experiences in domestic violence. Sure, sure, happy to. Um, I have sort of a uh, um, convoluted background. Mm -hmm. Let's see, I'm um, born on the island of Hawaii. Mm -hmm. I'm raised, however, here on Oahu, a graduate of Star of the Sea, a nice mm -hmm. all-girls Catholic school, mm -hmm. and the University of Dayton, another Catholic college. Mm -hmm. um, my background is in journalism, oh, so I, I came back from Dayton and thought I'd be the great investigative <laughs> reporter. Nobody <laughs> was hiring great investigative <laughs> reporters at the time. Yeah. But the police department was hiring women on an equal basis for the first time. Oh. Um, and that was one of what, those... What, what do you mean, equal basis? Equal to men. They had to change the badge from yes. policeman to yeah. police officer. Oh. Women wore the same uniform, did yes. exactly the same work. Yeah. In the past, mm -hmm. women officers were, um, well, you saw women in the police department because they were matrons mm -hmm. in the cell block, or women officers who went through training mm -hmm. only did some of the training and they went from recruit school into juvenile crime. Oh, I that see. That was it. All right. But when EEOC and, you know, the right. civil rights laws were passed and EEOC came to be, then it was discriminatory oh. to refuse to hire a woman <laughs> yes. for policing. Right? I see, I see, okay. So Lucila Brew, who was oh. a police woman at mm -hmm. the time, sued to open up the opportunity for women to be able to serve equally so she oh. could be promoted beyond just police officer. All right. right. So I came in with that first group of women. Uh, uh, there were five of us mm -hmm. and approximately 2,000 men. Yes. It was a sort of hostile environment, but what the heck, it was fun. <laughs> okay. So I worked in patrol division, um, and that was part of my exposure to domestic violence, to watch to see how my brother officers responded. And uh, I certainly understand my response is quite different. Right. Mm -hmm. Later, I went. Oh, why? Why was it different? Um, because it, I can potentially be a victim of domestic violence. Yes. Because I could see um, that my brother officers would minimize mm -hmm. uh, the violence that was there. Oh, um, I see. And also, I think uh, because I have a deeper understanding of domestic violence myself as All a right. personal experience. We can and talk about that later. Yeah. yeah. So later, when I leave the police department, um, I, I... May I ask how, how many years you served in mm -hmm. the police I department? I was in there for seven. For oh, seven. Yeah, right. I didn't stay long. Mm -hmm. um, there was no future for me um, because I refused to walk during the blue flu. Oh, but I that's see. another story All completely. Right. Anyway. So uh, I later ran for elective office mm -hmm. and uh, became a member of the House of All Representatives. Right. Uh, again, I used my background with crimes against women, uh, domestic violence and sex assault, to create a crimes against women's package mm -hmm. to advocate for um, victims mm -hmm. of crime uh, and to substantially change the laws uh, oh, with see. respect to domestic violence and sex assault. Uh, today, uh, aside from being a professional facilitator, which is sort of what I do, I try to intervene and help people communicate better, mm -hmm. um, I also sit on the parole board, 
Uh, and, you know, we make decisions about minimum sentencing and whether or not one will be paroled. We see prisoners every day. Um, so let me stop you, Emil. Yeah. Your uh, um, uh, position on the, par uh, the parole board mm -hmm. is a full-time occupation. We because meet you said you five serve days five a week. days a week. Five days a week. There, yeah. there are five members of the board, and at any given time, you must have three, three. members in the hearing. I see. So we can take turns, mm -hmm. you know, to have a day or two off. Right. But the, the parole board meets five days a week. Every well, thank day. you this afternoon for coming. Yes. Uh, you know, I, I was pleased to be invited oh. and happy to talk on this subject. Oh, Thank good. you for thinking of me. No, no, no. Uh, it, it's good to have someone with a background in this area. One thing that you have mentioned maybe two or three times this afternoon, and I, I, I would like to know maybe the difference, is you have mentioned domestic violence, mm -hmm. and you have also uh, mentioned sexual uh, assault. Assault. Mm -hmm. So is, one is not necessarily the other. No, they're quite separate crimes. Uh, uh, so you could, have, you could have a sexual assault without necessarily having domestic violence. Yes, well, domestic violence, and it, the, yep. the way it's called in the penal code is abuse of household member. Ah, so that essentially is physical violence against someone to whom you are either cohabitating, you're under mm -hmm. the same roof, um, or you are married to, mm. or you have some kind of relationship. You could be dating also. Um, mm -hmm. And it has to do with physical violence against uh, someone with whom you have a relationship. Within the same household? Within the same household. But and it also covers dating, which means they may dating. not be living together, but oh. they have a relationship, yes. But, uh, Sexual violence yeah. may not necessarily be, be between us, two people living in the same household. That's right. So sex assault, S uh, often, assault. often. Um, first of all, the, the violence there mm -hmm. is sexual. Mm -hmm. So there's genital penetration or oh, some kind of sexual see, penetration. Yeah. Right. Um, the person, um, more likely than not, is not related to you. Um, oh, I see, I and, see. And um, the, the type of violence that is done uh, there is um, specifically defined by statute quite differently from domestic violence. Mm -hmm. Domestic violence, the highest penalty is a Class C felony oh, that's um, five years in jail. Sex assault, it's from, you know, life right, in right, prison right, right. down to five years right. in jail. So it's a yeah. felony. Yes, both are felonies. Oh, both are felonies. Both are felonies. So domestic violence may constitute, punishment-wise, a, a felony. Five years in jail. Five and years. the way that you, all right, so normally mm -hmm. the, uh, the spouses are fighting, um, the man has hit his wife, neighbors have called the police, the police right. intervene. Normally what they will do is ask him to leave. Police have the ability, mm -hmm. if they see that there is a potential of greater danger here to the victim, have the ability to ask him to stay away for 24 hours, oh, or see. if need be, 48 hours. They tell him at that time. At that moment, leave the house and mm -hmm. you will not return. And if you return, yeah. you will be arrested. Oh. What that period allows then is for the victim to go to the courts, the yes. district courts, and get a restraining order to keep him away from her if she feels there's mm -hmm. a potential for more violence. For 30 days, for a year, for more than a year if mm -hmm. needed. If he returns, um, the police can automatically arrest him mm -hmm. because he has broken the order. Um, if there is Another event where the police are called within the same year. Within um, the year. Within that not, year. Not within the 24 hours. Right. Yeah. It is possible for him to then be incarcerated up to 30 days in jail oh, for essentially doing the same thing again within mm -hmm. that year. Mm -hmm. If there is choking involved, yeah. 
you. Or if the violence takes place in front of children oh, below see. the age of 14. Yes. That is the five-year penalty. That is the mm. felony. So what we have mm. learned mm. over the years yes. is the potential of the, the greater lethality. Right. Of, you know, of the choking, the potential of death yeah. to her. What we have also learned is the harm that is done oh. to have violence in front of children. Children. I and see. hence, having learned that, we then raise the penalty on I those see. two types of occurrences. So what you are saying, I conclude, is that there is a psychiatric or emotional uh, impact on children absolutely. when when such violence were to occur. Yes, absolutely. Okay. And that sort of makes sense, doesn't it? I yeah, mean, I guess it does. Your, yeah. your parents are the two right. most important people right. in your lives, the most <laughs> rational. They're the law keepers, yeah. right? They're, right. And, and you see, for a child to see them acting mm. out in this crazy way, right, right. Um, first of all, the child then has a feeling of, I will never be safe in mm. the one place I'm supposed to be safe. Right. And I can't rely on these two adults mm. because they're being crazy, you know, with well, dad on, wailing on mom. Uh, the other thing which I didn't realize until now is that statutorily the police officer can request the abuser, for the lack of a term, mm -hmm. to, to leave the, uh, the, the residence for 24 hours. Yes. He doesn't, Isn't that have to, he doesn't have to go to court to get a court order. Mm -mm. He can just uh, order him away. O order him away for 24 hours. Yes. Oh, I, that I didn't know. Yeah. The um, uh, other um, thing which is important to me, I think, is um, if there are young children, mm -hmm. then the the punishment increases. Yes. Uh, yes. Yes. Mm. This is to protect the children's welfare. Yes, absolutely. It is. Mm, it I is. see, I see. So, you know, the, the, I mean, we have come so far, Roy, mm -hmm. where when I was a child um, and domestic violence took place in the household, all the neighbors just kind of looked the other way. Right. Nobody had got involved. Right, this is right. <laughs> a private matter. Right. This is a family matter. Right. If the police arrived, police didn't do much about it. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no arrest for mm -hmm. this offense. There was no discussion about this in in the courts. Right. Everybody right. just sort of cleaned up the woman and sent her back home to go be with her husband again. Mm -hmm. With the emergence of the feminist movement, with a discussion about women have rights, women have an identity. Women have, should have some power. Mm. Then there is the discussion about the equality of women, uh -huh. the rights of women. And finally, we begin in the 60s and 70s to publicly speak about violence against women in the guise of domestic violence, in the guise of date rape and sexual oh, assault. Date rape. And all of these things start to emerge and then we get into the legislature and we change the laws. Mm. How smart we are. Right? You are, you are. Uh, <laughs> and now all of us we, are. we, we uh, will be taking our first uh, break oh, now. Okay. So uh, uh, if there are questions, uh, please uh, feel free to uh, contact us at Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Okay, this is Think Tech Hawaii. And it's Wednesday. Every Wednesday is Energy Wednesday here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. 4 to 5 p.m. every Wednesday. Come and listen to us. And just to show you what I mean, I'm going to ask Sharon to tell us more. Come and see us every Wednesday, as Jay said. And we have people like Jim Albers from HECO here and co-host Ray Starling here every Wednesday. We not only go on Olelo and OC16, but also stream live. So please come visit us. Hear about the latest in clean energy. Okay, Jim, you've been here. You got any comment on all this? As important as energy is in all of our lives today, this is a great forum and a great format to vet those issues. So I encourage everybody to listen in and participate.
Okay, Ray, what do you think for a close? Well, I, I think this is the greatest show uh, in the energy world here in Hawaii. Uh, you can come here every week, one hour, and catch the latest on what's happening and hear from the people who really know what's going on, uh, like Jim Alberts. We appreciate your coming today. Thank you. Ray Starling, Sharon Moriwaki, Jim Alberts, and Jay Fidel here in Hawaii, the state of clean energy. Aloha. 4 to 5 p.m. Wednesday. Aloha. Aloha. Uh -huh. Aloha, and we're back this afternoon with uh, Anel Am Amaral, and we are uh, speaking today about domestic violence. Now, Anel, let me uh, move along, and uh, you said you had some personal experience involving domestic and yes. violence, and you think that that experience has helped you, and not helped you, but uh, has enriched your professional life in such a way that you can understand the victims better. Um, it certainly, because of my own personal experience, puts mm -hmm. the issue of violence against women sort of in the forefront. It's mm -hmm. something I pay more attention to. Um, you know, my my dad died when I was six years old um, mm. and my older sister was seven and my baby sister was two and mom then was you know a young mother with three little babies mm. and I'm sure that had to be a very frightening experience mm. for her mm -hmm. and then um, she met a very charming man who swept her off her feet and she remarried and mm -hmm. They sold the house in Hilo and sold the land and moved us all to uh, Oahu. Oh, I see. Uh, okay. Yeah. I keep trying to get back to Hawaii Island, which oh, is the don't. only civilized place there <laughs> is. You know that. Bravo. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I haven't managed to get back yet. Yeah. Anyway. I anyway. hope you will. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. <laughs> so what ends up happening is, um, you know, my parents have two more children, so I have another sister and a, a brother and, right. and I guess he probably was not ready for a ready-made family and probably feeling some pressures and he began beating my mother mm. um, I can remember how often it would happen on weekends and so I started hating weekends and um, my older sister and I had a routine where uh, she would gather all my brother and my sisters and take them into the far bedroom to hide them mm. so they didn't see the violence. And my job would be to get between these two adults oh. and try to stop him from hitting her. Mm. Um, but you were very young at that time. Yeah, I was in third grade. Mm -hmm. So, you know, how old are you? Like nine, mm -hmm. ten years old, something mm -hmm. like that? Right. And it continued until I finally got big enough to finally stop him. And by oh, I then see. I was in high school oh, when I could I finally see. stop him. So I was a child witness to domestic mm. violence. I grew up with a sense of, of constant fear in, in the one place I was supposed to be safe. Right. With, uh, knowing I couldn't rely on anyone. The right. policeman would come to yep. the house. Mother would be unconscious on the floor, bleeding. We're waiting for the ambulance. And the policeman is, you know, shifting from foot to foot, laughing and talking with my stepfather. Mm. While I'm thinking, my mother's dying. Mm. Uh, one of the things, that, that had a profound impact on me. And one of the things I, I promised myself I would do every time I responded to a domestic violence scene as a police officer. When those children saw that uniform, mm -hmm. when that woman saw mm -hmm. that uniform, they knew they were safe. Uh, I would not put them through mm -hmm. what I had to go through. I see. So what I've done, I think, Roy, is I have taken instances in my life mm -hmm. that otherwise scar and uh, harm you right. and tried to see how I could turn it into something positive for people, for, for others, mm. so they wouldn't have to go through the same thing I went through. So. Well, let me ask you this. Mm -hmm. uh, traditionally, when we talk about domestic violence, we think it's a conflict 
by, uh, abuse by a male yes. against a female. And traditionally it is. 90% yeah. of the cases are a male uh, against a female. female. But now I read in the newspapers and uh, see on televisions, there are abuses by a father against his children. That's child abuse. Oh, child abuse now. It's a different um, set of laws dealing with yeah, Is, um, parents feeding children. That's handled in a family court or a criminal court? Um, family court. Family court. Yeah, um, yeah. Because then often, and the Department of Human Services has to perhaps separate that child oh, for their own safety right, right, and take right. custody away from So the family court handles that. Also, <clears throat> Um, you know, we uh, seniors are now tending to live longer, which is which is wonderful. But more and more, uh, at least I read or I see, a lot of abuse against seniors by their children, and I, you know, I don't condone it. Mm -hmm. But I can sometimes understand the situation because if you have a elderly elderly person with uh, dementia and you have to deal with it mm. every day it is awfully frustrating so now you have abuse against an elderly parent mm -hmm. more and more and and often when we see elder abuse we usually are seeing them taking advantage of their parents taking their money ah, taking control over right. The estate, you right, know, right. Um, and depriving them of their their money and, and a way for them to be able to care for themselves. Too. I see. Um, there are instances of physical abuse, and certainly, certainly, one can understand how difficult it is for a caretaker, you know, um, to be 24 hours a day providing care, and there's a real burnout factor there, and there you know, may be physical abuse, but more often than not for the elderly, it really is taking their money. money. And mm. taking Let me uh, ask you this, Anil. You know, uh, you said about 90% it's male against female. Mm -hmm. Based on your experiences, have you encountered female abuse against a male person? Yes. Yes, I have, I have personally handled cases as a police officer of females physically abusing their male partner. Um, it is unusual. Yeah, it's I would, an unusual uh, yeah, circumstance. I would think uh, it's highly unusual. Yeah, yeah. Uh, under but, what circumstances would a female abuse the male? very similar to the way a male would abuse a female. Exactly. She's physically hitting him, physically mm. hurting him, and he doesn't resist at all. Now, perhaps he's been raised in a family that says you will not hit women, mm. you know? Mm -hmm. So he doesn't resist. Right. And, you know, she, I, cases I have seen where women have actually hit men in the face, there is apparently redness, pain, mm. um, sometimes bleeding, um, sometimes scratching, but, and this is not just her trying to defend herself, because you'll go to a, a domestic violence case where you will see injury on her, but you'll see injury on him as well, because mm. she's trying to defend herself. Right. But in this case, you will see where the woman, woman is abusing, she has no physical injuries, and he has I the physical see, injuries, and he is very reluctant to speak about this. He's very shamed. Oh, shame. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me uh, ask you this, you know. Um, uh, domestic violence is, is a, a situation in Honolulu or elsewhere where it's becoming, I think, a more prevalent uh, social problem. Now, what, why is it that we seem to have more dom uh, domestic violence cases as compared to the past? Mm -hmm. is, it, it, is it some uh, reason that's causing more domestic violence? Certainly, we are much more open about talking about domestic violence today mm -hmm. as we are about talking about sex assault. Mm. In the past, mm. we would not bring this subject up. 
we would not publicly talk about what was happening in our home. Right. I, I will tell you, by the way, yeah. my discussion of my circumstance, you know, with my stepfather and, right. and um, what has happened to me. This is the first time I am speaking publicly of oh. these things. Oh, and my God. the yeah. reason is mm -hmm. that my stepfather is now dead yeah. and gone. Yeah. Um, my mother is mm -hmm. dead and gone. And my brother and my sisters all live on the continent. Oh. There is an incredible amount of mm. shame mm. that goes with, with this. Right, you know, and, right. And a fear that people make judgments about you. Well, mm. what's wrong with you, you know? Mm, I see, I see. The, <laughs> the, the stereotype is if yeah. there is violence, well, then you must be poor and uneducated, uh. right? You must be from Y9. <laughs> yeah. Okay. That's I was a bad raised, conclusion. Yes. Young. I was raised in Wailai Kahala. Oh, I yeah. went to private school all of <laughs> yeah, my yeah. life. Right. But still, but still, you had that experience. Yes. So it can happen to anyone. Anyone. Uh. It's not uneducated people. It's not poor people. Mm. It cuts all across all socioeconomic, ethnic lines. Mm. It has nothing to do with it. Let, let me uh, ask you your opinion on this as to the cause. Mm -hmm. Do you think uh, there's more uh, domestic violence because of drugs, of, um, you know, of this pressure to succeed? Mm -hmm. uh, uh, you know, as I said, we didn't hear about these as often as we do now. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I, I, think, I think there is an aspect, Roy, of um, mm -hmm. the, the prevalence of drugs, yeah. um, in, in particular, the, the growing use of ice and the amount oh, of violence around yeah. uh, methamphetamine and mm -hmm. ice users. You know. um, there is an aspect, I think, of that. Certainly, there's an aspect of the inability to deal with economic pressures and life's pressures um, mm -hmm. and and then when you take away any inhibition by now using drugs or alcohol I see, I see. you know then that's a lot of permission to act out mm -hmm. I, th I think however that on the other side of it we are getting smarter yes. about talking to our children in schools yeah. about what are other ways we can solve problems mm. without hitting I see. Can, yeah. can we start to give our children right. some skill in conflict resolution oh, oh, instead of you know raising children right. to solve their problems by hitting? Mm. You know, I think too yeah. we need to have more discussions with parents about it's oh. not okay to beat on your kids because they misbehave. Mm. Time out works sometimes, mm, mm, you know. Mm, mm, mm. Um, can you figure another way to raise your children mm. with compassion and love and care and still somehow bring some discipline into their lives without mm. hitting them? Well, this is our second break on now. Yikes! Yeah, there's too many points here. <laughs> so if uh, any of you out there have questions, please feel free to contact us at uh, Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hilary Weinberg. I'm the host of The Whole Gamut on Think Tech Hawaii. See us live every Tuesday at 1 p.m. or on our YouTube channel to hear us talk about world affairs from Hawaii and beyond. See you then. Aloha, this is Reg Baker and I am the host of Business in Hawaii. We talk about positive stories, positive stories of businesses in Hawaii, how they have been successful, and how they have overcome some of the obstacles that a lot of us encounter when we try to have a business here. And believe it or not, there are a number of positive stories here, and we want to talk to all of you. So we broadcast live every Thursday at 2 o'clock, uh, and it rebroadcasts again on Olelo Channel 54. So I sure hope to see you next time. Please tune in on Thursdays at 2 o'clock. Thank you. Aloha again. 
Uh, our guest this uh, afternoon is Anel Am Amaral. Now, uh, <coughs> Anel, before uh, we uh, conclude the program, because we're going at a fast pace here, sure. I understand there is a, an organization called Domestic Violence Action Center. Mm -hmm. Can yes. you tell us what this uh, organization is about and what it does? Uh, Sure, yeah. Well, the Domestic Violence Action Center is, is a nonprofit, a private nonprofit that intervenes in cases of domestic violence. And they have all sorts of services that they provide. Um, they, they are able to assist victims with um, risk assessment, figuring out how potentially lethal their situation mm. is. Victims can call into a hotline mm. at the Domestic Violence Center and mm. get advice, um, uh, describe. At, 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 at that time? Well, usually mm. they won't be calling in right, as right, long right, as right. he's there. Right, and, right, right. But, but they can call right. and explain their circumstances and, and get some assistance just by phone. Mm. Then when they're comfortable, or if mm -hmm. they feel safe enough, they can go to the Domestic Violence Center and get one-on-one -on -one counseling. Where, where is this place? Well, we actually um, keep the location... Um, confidential? Confidential. Oh, yeah. I see, I see, okay. Um, I just can, to protect victims. Yeah, I can understand, yeah. right. Yeah. Um, they are able to get legal assistance from mm. the Domestic Violence Action Center as well right. um, to help them get restraining orders, temporary mm. restraining orders or protective orders. Uh, DVAC will accompany them to court oh. and sit beside them and help them understand the process that they're going through and support them. And if needed and if she is finally in a circumstance where she is safe, Yes. They will do counseling not only for her but for the children, oh, for the other members I of the see, family. I see. The DVAC also works with larger um, groups, nonprofits, and they work in a consortium to try to assist one another. Mm. So one of the interesting things they do too is they work with Filipino groups, immigrant groups, mm. Native Hawaiian groups. This this is free. This is free. Yes. Mm. Yeah. The, and, and they get their money from the state legislature and from oh. grants and, you know, I see, um, I see. things like All that. Right. So, um, the public can also donate, uh, yes, con contribute yes. if they want to. Absolutely, and the public should contribute right, to, right, right. to the Domestic Violence Action Center, if you remember that, because mm -hmm. they do such good work. Mm -hmm. um, so they, they uh, have programs that are <laughs> culturally appropriate. So, um, what, what do you mean by that? For instance, um, when working with the Filipino community, right. um, then they have Filipino women right. who are able to speak in Tagalog oh. with them, who um, and all the Filipino women can sit together and right. talk about their circumstances, so they don't feel like they're all alone. Right. They, um, mm -hmm. There are values um, within the Filipino culture um, that deal with their religious values oh, and right. because they are for the most part Catholic, yeah. they do not want to divorce. Mm. Um, so they want to save and protect this mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. albeit there is a great deal of abuse. Mm -hmm. And how can we support each other? We do the same thing with the Hawaiian community. Our family is important, ohana mm -hmm. is important. Mm -hmm. It's important to keep us intact, right. to solve the problem together, though I may be in a dangerous cir circumstance because even though my family is important to me, clearly my husband mm -hmm. is wailing on me and beating mm -hmm. me up, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. so. Um, but I can sit with other Hawaiian women. We can do things that make us comfortable, go to a place that is comfortable for us. Oh, I see. Um, maybe be doing things with our hands as we're all talking about what we're going through. We hear the same circ circumstance exists for all of us. Right. We share the same values. We are able to approach the solutions in a deeper, oh, more meaningful way. I see, I see. It used to be in the past when we talked about domestic violence, we spoke of it as feminist women. 
Mm. That is a very Western approach. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. <laughs> and it doesn't yep. necessarily resonate. Right, you right, know? right. It kind of uh, also, it seems like you're looking down on people when you do that. It does oh. feel that way, doesn't yeah. it? Yeah. Hey, I, 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 that's my conclusion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, uh, is it seven days a week, the service? Yes, I believe it is. Seven days a week, 24 hours a day. Uh, 24. So you could call the hotline. The hotline. The, the, not all the counseling and that sort of thing is yeah. seven days a week. I mean, that you have to make yeah, right, arrangements right, right, for. Right. But I believe the, 24, yeah. the hotline is. So uh, someone who is a victim of uh, domestic violence uh, could call the uh, Domestic Violence Action Center. Why would a victim call this center as opposed to the police department? Or do oh, you no. do it? Absolutely. The first call, yeah. when you are in trouble, when at that moment, your first call is to the police department. Mm -hmm. You call the action center when you're now uh, safe, but you need help. You right, need advice. What right. is my next step? What right. choices do I have now? That's when you call the action center. But no, in the middle of the violence, 911, get the police there. As soon as get you can. Get intervention. Yes. Yeah. Save yourself. Save so your children. Let, let me ask you on a practical basis. Mm -hmm. If you are uh, being beaten up by someone, uh, does the operator at the police department ask uh, the circumstances of the, the beating so that they can send the appropriate police officer? Oh, they're going to send the beat cop. Whoever oh. the nearest cop is that's available, that's the one that's responding. To domestic violence cases, you always send two officers. Mm. So, because they are one of the most dangerous cases to respond to. That's Wh where officers that? That? often get hurt. The officer oh. is trying to intervene, trying to get the man to back off. Right. You know, the woman yeah. doesn't appreciate the police officer being there. She comes with the pot and slams the officer on the back of the head and knocks him unconscious. The woman does that? Uh, yeah. Why? why uh, that I cannot understand. Oh, no. She's being beaten up mm -hmm. and she would beat the cop? Yes. The, the police officer? Yes. These are not rational cases, right? And they're not all the same. And. They are still the, one of the reasons why police officers don't like responding to DVs oh. is it is so dangerous. It's so dangerous. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I, I would think she would be the most supportive person. You would think, yes, not necessarily. Yeah. And she doesn't necessarily make a good witness, and she often recants, mm. which makes the prosecutor very angry and the police officer very angry. And that, that reminds me of another, uh, uh, something I've heard. They say uh, that many times the victim thinks that she is the cause of this uh, domestic violence and she feels like uh, uh, that uh, she ought not to report it mm -hmm. because she's the cause. Absolutely, yes, is that absolutely. It so often is the case. If I hadn't done this, he wouldn't have hit me. It's my fault because I answered him with a smart aleck response. It's my fault that I got hit, you know. If such is the situation, Anel, how do you get a, a victim or a survivor to kind of change her thinking? Yes. Is, is, does the counselor uh, uh, advise her along those lines to help her? Yes, absolutely. That's why the counseling is needed. That's why. Because she is internalizing not a whole lot, not only a whole lot of grief, but a whole lot of anger. And she's blaming, a lot of self-blame. And what the counselor needs to do is to take that and help her understand that the wrongheadedness of this. But she's got to talk it through. She's got to admit that that's what she's doing. So you can then get to, to um, breaking down those misunderstandings of what's happening. Oh, I, I will tell you quite often yeah. that as a child, yeah. when there was violence, you know, mom and dad fighting, I thought I caused it. Oh. It's because I was misbehaving, and then, you know, 
that made dad mad and that's why he hit mom. Mm. I mean, this mm. is weird stuff. Mm. Mm. If it were easy, you and I would not be sitting here talking about it. <laughs> <laughs> let, let me uh, uh, ask you this now. In the past, uh, maybe even now, you know, neighbors hear uh, the uh, fighting going on, yeah. and they don't want to get involved mm. uh, and, and call the police. What, what is your advice about neighbors getting involved? Yeah, my advice is yeah. we are a civilized society. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Pick up the phone, call, tell them, tell dispatch, call the police department, tell dispatch, you're my neighbor, this is, I'm his neighbor, he's beating up his wife, that's the address. They will protect the neighbor's identity. They will not be, you know, parking and going to the neighbor's <laughs> house. They're going to where the violence right, is. Right, right. But I think yep. a civilized community looks out for one another. Mm, we help one mm, another. Mm, 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 mm. And we have that responsibility, I think. I see, and okay. So if you see a crime taking place, if you see children being beaten across the street, right. you know, by their mom or their dad, call the police. You see a woman being beaten by her husband, call the police. Mm -hmm. Just as if you saw some burglar breaking into your neighbor's house, <laughs> no, you'd call the police. police. Right, 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 right. Anil, right, right. Yeah. we are fast approaching the end of this program, but what can a lay person in the community uh, do or help uh, say, the Domestic Viol Violence Action Center, mm -hmm. or uh, help when uh, he or she feels that there might be some domestic violence uh, around his residence. Mm -hmm. well, what, what do you think the public can do besides reporting? Yeah, I, um, th there, there are so many ways to get involved. We had spoken earlier about how mm -hmm. The domestic action, right. domestic violence action center, you know, doesn't charge for their services, so they have to write grants, they have to seek mm. money. You know, if you believe in a cause like mm. this, right. uh, where whatever the local support service is for victims of domestic mm. violence, mm. Mm. how you help is make a contribution. You know, I that see, would be I lovely. See. Give them a Christmas gift right. uh, of some money to help offset and provide for the great staff that does this kind of work. Um, if you are uh, a victim of domestic violence, seek professional help. Um, there are these agencies in all of your neighborhoods. Oh, that's another interesting thing. Mm -hmm. Besides the police department and the domestic violence action center, mm -hmm. are there other sources that a victim can go to to seek help? You know, there are other mm. organizations. I mean, like, I, I think Catholic Charities has oh, intervention for, right, for right. domestic violence. So the best thing would be to just, um, the other thing is you could call AUW. What is uh, AUW? Aloha United oh, Way. Oh, right, right. Um, and ask for referrals. Who are the agencies, mm. the reputable agencies that right. do this kind of work? You know, um, and they have a list and right. uh, phone numbers and people uh, that can intervene and help you. I uh, see. So just reach out. You I know? see. Well, uh, another, uh, you know, I don't want to prolong this, but another uh, group of people that uh, I uh, recently heard has uh, problems are the, are the military. You know, they come back from. Yeah. Uh, a foreign country, mm -hmm. and they have emotional problems, mm -hmm. and I can also understand that they're under great stress. They got emotional issues, and then when they come home, their spouses expect them to be the same as prior to uh, yes. going abroad. Yes. They come back, he or she is a different person now, mm -hmm. and is very abusive to the spouse or the kids are yelling and, mm -hmm. and uh, what is your take on these um, military who, you know, very 
Sad. It is. It is. Uh, I had the honor and the privilege to work for the U.S. Army Garrison Hawaii oh, here. Yeah. Um, and mm -hmm. I am just so proud to say that mm -hmm. they take a very proactive position when it comes to intervening, helping the soldiers coming home, transition home, they have zero tolerance for violence mm. in the family. They intervene immediately mm -hmm. to get him the counseling he needs and to keep her safe, yes. you know. Um, Do they call the military police yes, or the, military. Uh, the HBD? No, they, they call their military oh, police. See, and their resources of support are there on their bases, I so see. they don't have to go off base oh. to go look for resources. There are resources right there on their oh, base I for see, them. I see, I see. Well, uh, <clears throat> and now, you know, it's uh, time to uh, uh, call it uh, uh, the end of a very wonderful... Uh, Say it ain't <laughs> so, Joe. <laughs> you were a very informative and very interesting Thank you. Uh, guest this afternoon. Thank you. Maybe in You're the You're a great interviewer. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I can see why you won uh, office, uh, public office. Very, very uh, astute uh, person. Mm -hmm. But uh, I wanted to say that in the future, uh, I may call you back again. Okay. And maybe you can bring your, uh, you know, the others in the Action Center group. Great. And have a, you know, more than one speaker to speak on this subject. But it is a very helpful uh, subject that, uh, excuse me, uh, afternoon where you spoke very informatively. And I want to thank you. Thank <laughs> you. Mahalo. Mahalo okay. to you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Oh, aloha and goodbye to uh, ThinkTech Hawaii. And happy Thanksgiving to all of you. Thank you.